protected from the cold and the snow, and uh, glad to see you all here. I was uh, sharing with Miss Sherry here just uh, beforehand that the, somehow I had this mistaken idea that now I'm, you know, over 65 and I retired. Oh, good to see you, Carol. Well, good morning. Well, now that I uh, am semi-retired, that uh, life should just be coasting, there should be no major problems, I shouldn't have to deal with uh, the junk of life. It was this idea that I, you know, thought I, you know, it doesn't work that way, apparently. So anyhow, the first hymn we're going to sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, is really talking about the pilgrim journey that we're on, and how we need healing, we need deliverance, to look forward to our heavenly home. And so let's sing robustly, Guide Me Thou Great Jehovah. Let's stand and sing hymn number 83.
some days we have the Olympian Club, uh, pre-K through 6th grade, 9.15 and 10.15 a.m. Wednesday Bible study and prayer meeting at the home of the Elrimos at 7 p.m. February 10th is our Valentine's potluck and game night. I have a sign-up sheet here. Uh, if you would, please sign up for whatever you can bring on the front. And on the back, if you would, please write down, you know, put your name and, and how many you think are coming, if you would, please. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So March 4th is our next council meeting at 7 p.m. That will be here at the church. Uh, March 9th is a church cleaning day, and that will be March 16th if we uh, need to change it due to the weather. Um, April 22nd is the Fellowship of Bible Church's conference <coughs> dinner at 6 p.m. Uh, that's the one we're hosting here at the church. Um, Matt Wilson is the speaker that night. Okay, and Pastor Matt's the speaker. Okay. Um, missionary letter updates are now available. And February uh, is to be announced the women's Bible study, but it will be chapter 3. Um, oh, did we? Can we pick a BBS people? Third or fourth week in uh, June? Yes. Third or fourth week yeah. in June? Yeah. For BBS, third or fourth week in June? Oh, I'm going to fourth. Fourth? Okay, BBS is the fourth week of June. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the latest information. <laughs> Jungle Journey, Journey to the Seven Seas of History. Jungle Journey for VBS this year. That'll be coming up quick. So if you happen to see any exotic creatures in the Dollar General on sale, hold well, on to them. Cool vines. So that's the 24th through the 28th, is that what you said? Yeah. Well, yeah. John, can I put in a little plug for the Wednesday night? We weren't able to get together this past Wednesday because of various things. But uh, uh, we're looking forward to hitting those uh, three parables. Uh, I don't know if we get all, to all three in one night. But the three parables in Matthew 24, 25 there about the, the virgins and the talents and the sheep and the goats, all about uh, the kingdom. And they're difficult parables. And... Uh, not everyone comes out on the right side of things, so uh, I'll warn you about that. But if you can all, uh, anyone can make it, please come out Wednesday night. We'd like to really uh, have some fun with that. And then uh, secondly, uh, I, I know you uh, announced that we are praying for a pastor, but can we fashion that prayer in the form of praying specifically for Paul as he's trying to find the, the gift that God has called him to? Uh, working with Pastor Sam and us. And so let's pray particularly to encourage Paul uh, Koblenz and uh, God's leading in his life. Yep. Pray for Paul as well each morning at 7 a.m. if you would please. Pray for God to provide us a pastor and for Paul to finish his studies and God to lead him what he would have him to do. Um, other prayers, uh, continue to pray for, for Israel, the situation there. Um, Eric's surgery has been postponed. Um, it was supposed to be Thursday, right? And they postponed it. Um, the, the surgeon and medical team wanted to run a few more tests before they, they went ahead and did the surgery. So uh, just be in prayer for that, that uh, they get that scheduled. Uh, of course, as you can imagine, Eric would like to get that done with and, and move on. So uh, continue to pray there. Um, my mom and dad aren't here this morning. They're traveling to Georgia. My cousin, Norma Jean, passed away last week. Uh, she was in her early 60s. Uh, be in prayer for uh, her family. Uh, her name is Norma Jean Manor. Um, she has two daughters and her husband. Um, she had complications of diabetes, so um, she passed away. Mom and dad went down for the funeral, so that's where they are. Um, Continue to uh, keep in prayer the young folks that were mentioned last week. Noah has to have his adenoids and tonsils removed, and, and Owen has the dental work, so please pray for, for them that all that um, works out well and they find the right uh, dentist for Owen. Um, Ms. Carroll's here with us this morning. We're glad to see her. Um, 
continue to pray for, for Miss Carol. Um, Tiffany Robinson, um, Pastor Sam just mentioned Pastor Matt. Pastor Matt's been with us a few times. I know Pastor Matt real well, working with the teenagers through Fellowship of Bible Churches. And his wife, Tiffany, is, is very ill. Um, she's getting a little better, it seems like, but I have an update here. It's, it's pretty lengthy if you want to read the whole thing, but just to hit some highlights. Um, she had some problems. They wanted to fly her out to the hospital, but it was too foggy. And so they, they took her um, ambulance. by ambulance. Where, Four o'clock in the morning. Where were they from and where did they take From Waynesboro to York. From Waynesboro to York. Uh, they took her by ambulance. Um, and I'll just get some highlights here on the, on the update. Um, they put in a chest drain because she had fluid around her heart. Um, they removed the chest drain because it didn't have any more accumulation of fluid, praise the Lord. The drain will remain out unless she builds up more fluid, so we need to pray that she doesn't build up any more fluid there. Um, they mentioned that if it kept building up that she probably would have had a heart attack. Um, they were able to move her from the open heart cardiac unit to another room for more testing and observation. Uh, the focus is on the lungs, which remain a mystery. They aren't sure if she has a viral, bacterial, fungal problem or, or something else. Test results could take days. Uh, pray that the doctors would get clarity on how to treat her. There's still a possibility of a lung procedure or two that could take place on Monday. So please be in prayer for her. There's some things that would take place for her on Monday. Uh, a later update that came through, um, today was a calm day. Tiffany slept for eight hours. Uh, this is the most she's, um, the most sleep she's had in three weeks. They've continued to test her. Um, I think we crossed over the 100 test mark today. Um, she's doing well. She's a trooper. She was able to take a good walk with oxygen. Our lung power is down to about half, but the doctors think that will improve as they get the fluid out of her lungs. Uh, they're supposed to do a CAT scan at 1.30 in the morning. I think that was probably this morning, I guess. Um, I think this will be the fourth CAT scan in three days. We focus on the condition along to see if any of the medications or antibiotics are working. They're calling this shotgun therapy because they have no idea if this will actually help. <laughs> The next major events are Monday. Also, the cardiologist team, pulmonary team, and infectious disease team will meet on Monday to discuss what the future holds. So it sounds like they're waiting to see what helps and try to figure out what's going on with her. John, do you have any idea about how old she is? Are I really, we talking in the 40s? I would say maybe early 40s if they're in their 40s. Yeah. Not my age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Children. Yes, yeah, they have young children. Yeah, I would say around 40. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're young people. So, a lot, a lot of problems for, for that age. Um, let's see. Thank you for all your prayers, gifts, text calls, emails. Oh, they've been getting, they're getting a lot of support. I can't believe how many people are praying. There's still a mystery in front of us and long recovery, but we remain confident in God's provision. So, please be in prayer for <laughs> Tiffany Robinson, and uh, as Pastor Sam met, he's the one I mentioned. He's the one that will be here speaking um, on April 22nd for the Fellowship of Bible Churches Conference. Um, continue to pray for um, the others on our prayer list. Is there any announcements or anything that I missed? Right. John. Yes. I want to thank everyone, everyone, for their prayers and their cards. And Dawn even took the time one day to come in and sit at the table with me. That was such a help. And it seemed like every other day I was getting a card from Eric and his family. Beautiful cards. <laughs> Just beautiful. Yeah, there. <laughs> and your prayers must be helped by the grace of God That's and Al. Yeah, we'll continue to pray for you, Miss Carol. He was a wonderful man. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right.
He said, in Canada, there's always a friend to the less fortunate. Then in 1855, he received a word that his mother was going through a time of testing and grief. And in order to encourage her, he wrote a poem, which are the words to what a friend we have in Jesus. Just a poem. Sent it to his mother. She was so encouraged. She sent the poem to a Christian periodical, and they published it without his name. 1857, uh, Charles Converse was so impressed by the poetry, he sent it to music. So it means the man who wrote it, the man who wrote the words and the music, never met. He didn't know who wrote it. He just sent that poem to music. Then in 1875, Ira Sankey, who worked with D.L. Moody, and a friend of uh, Charles Converse, saw this song, and in a book uh, that he was producing, Sankey's Gospel Hymns Number 1, this is the last song he put in. He was about to finish and thought one more song, and he put that in 1875. Still didn't know who wrote it. 1880, five years later, the mystery solved. When Mr. Striven was gotten ill, a neighbor came in and took care of him. And going through his possessions, she saw a poem, this poem, his original manuscript that he sent, then sent a copy to his mother. And he admitted he wrote the hymn later in life. Six years later, he went to be with the Lord. So when you see these songs, some people were going through great tragedies in their lives mm -hmm. and wrote these things to glorify the Lord. Let's bow down in prayer and look into the Word of God. Father, we give thanks for these songs that we sing, the songs, the words you gave to one man and the music to another. And our second just happened to put it in him, but no, it was that way. So we can encourage our hearts today. And uh, the song here, who've lost friends because they have a friend in Jesus. Friends on earth may forsake, but you don't. We thank you for Carol being here. Our hearts are encouraged by her. We pray for Eric. And all these twists and turns that he's going through this happens. And with Tiffany and the hospital and uh, Andrew Robinson and her illness and others that are going through things in this life that we don't understand, but you have a plan for all of us. And we pray for health and strength. Help us to do your will. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at going back or going on. And I thought the songs were encouraging today. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. We're in Numbers 14. Israel's been in the promised land. Been in the wilderness. They left Egypt. They got through the Red Sea. They're on the way to the promised land. They go to a place called Cades Barnea. And God says, and I'm going to get into a little more here on. I want you to send out spies and see the land that I've given to you. So they chose 12 men. They came back and they said, yep, the land when you said it is. <coughs> and I'll deal with this a little bit later on. Nevertheless, but, however, <coughs> and downhill we go from there on. So 10 of the spies said, we cannot do it. We're going back to Egypt. Two said, we're going on to the promised land. And I'm going to give the hint now. Which ones got to the promised land? The two who said they could. The ten who said they couldn't, didn't. And so we think about these spies. These ten guys that said, we can't do it. And I've thought about it over the years. Why did we ever get a bunch of guys like that? Where did they get these guys? Well, something that I've never done before in my life, I went back and looked up the names of all these ten men who said we can't do it and the meaning of their name. In the Bible, names have meaning. 
We have name and social security number for identification. But in the Bible, names have meanings. So the first five is Shema, which means renown. Shaphat means God judges. Ikal means God redeems. Batai means delivered. Gadiel, we see the L, God. Fortune of God. Gadi means fortunate. Abiel, people of God. Sefer, hidden. Nabi, conceal. Gudel, majesty of God. Can you imagine? Here are these guys. God judges, God redeems, fortune of God, people of God, majesty of God, and we can't do it. What I'm saying is they didn't live up to their name. And so we want to see their deliberation was faulty. In 14.4 was their decision. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Going back or going on? Which are you doing? You're either going on with the Lord or we're going back. Back to the old place. Now, in 13, 27, and 28, they talked about this land when they came back for the report. 13, chapter 13, and verse 37. Uh, it says, 20, uh, 27 rather. They told us, we came to the land which you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and the fruit in it, milk and honey. Now you know me. You know my background. When we had our trip to Israel in 1972, we'd been there, I don't know how many days, driving around. And <coughs> I asked the guide, I said, hey, uh, the Bible says this is a land of milk and honey. Where are your cows and your bees? <laughs> now, I didn't argue with him. He was telling me how much the cows in Israel are better than the cows in Wisconsin. Because <laughs> he's the guy that I didn't want to get an argument. Well, I'll kind of go with that, but we'll, we'll go on now. Cow, where are the cows and the honey? They said, but it was there. And the fruit thereof is like it's there. Now, when we were there in November, what in the Bible is described as the Battle of Armageddon. There's a valley of Megiddo in November. You wouldn't believe how lush it was when we were there. So Israel has taken that land, and uh, they say a lot of flowers in Europe are grown in Israel. So there was a lot of fruit there. Also, it says the desert will blossom like a rose. Now, I might be the millennium. My wife was working for, I think, a medical facility, and her supervisor was minimal skeptical, maybe worse than that, about the Bible. So when we came back, he said, hey, Sam, the Bible says the desert is going to bloom like a rose. Did you see any roses? I knew that guy, and I purposely took a picture of a rose in the, in the wilderness and said, Mr. So-and-so, here's your rose in November in Israel. So it was all there. But verse 28, that first word, nevertheless. You ever talk to people and you're going on oh, everything? Is, nevertheless. The word nevertheless means notwithstanding. How be it? One time this word is translated in the Old Testament without hope. Uttermost. Nothing. We're done. Nevertheless. The people are strong and dwell in the land. The cities are walled. They're great. We saw the children of Atkin there. So I said, first of all, they dwell on their present problems. Well, if we look at it, I just gave an illustration. They were afraid of having Jesus. So Moses he had said, well, I'm not giving up my family. And he would have quit church. We would have never had this. When Fanny Crosby uh, passed an eye, to, uh, say, uh, eye test, not so. And there are various ones. Uh, and as well with my soul. The men of our hymns were built on and happened with great tragedies. And God used that. 
over in rough times now. So they're saying, it's too bad. We, 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 our problem is overcome. It's not how big our problems are. It's how big our God is. Now I knew this at the farm. I knew here, here goes another farm illustration. If we had a load of hay and two horses couldn't pull it, we get two more out of the stable. <laughs> we had enough horsepower to pull it. One time I uncle, I got a wagon stuck and couldn't get it. So dad went down and he had a way of persuading horses to pull. Oh, you know, and they got out. So it's not how big your problem is, it's how big your God is. I'm finding out in my life, even now, I'm convinced there are times God puts me in spots that only He can solve. So only He gets the glory. And I say later on, that wasn't me. When I've got myself in trouble is when I've accomplished something. I get pulled my shoulder out of the joint, tapping myself on the shoulder for a little bit. It's not us. It's God. And so they were saying, we can't do it. Second, they depend on their own ability. It said, oh, what are we going to do? We've been trained this way. In verse, they said later on, we are not able to go up against the people. They're stronger. They brought an evil report. They made the problem worse than it is. John 15, 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me brings much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And have we ever done a bunch of nothing? How many times have we done things? It turns out to be nothing. We're past this age now, but when our children were little, Christmas Eve, putting those toys together, and uh, there's one part that we don't need, and you get it finished, that's the part you need. You gotta take the whole thing back, and I hate it when the spouse says, hey, did you read? Instructions. <laughs> Who needs to read instructions? We're a man. <laughs> read the instructions. Get the instruction book. We have an instruction book. It tells us, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And I put this down, sometimes in my records, my notes, things happen that don't make any sense whatsoever. And I'm just putting it down to see how is God going to work out. Well, I'm not doubting God. Sometimes I say, Lord, it's going to be interesting how you get us out of this. Oh, that's how you did it. I'm still learning how to do things. Why? Because we know one who didn't make a creation. There's nothing he can't fix. Because he made everything. So they depend on own powers and he gets us in trouble every time. But then they disregarded the Lord. As we look at what they said, <coughs> um, 1331, the men went up and they said, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. They brought an evil report. When they had searched the land, the Israel was saying, the land through which we had searched, it's a land that eats up the inhabitants. And all the people we saw were men of great stature. Guys were taller. We saw the giants, the son of Ankin, the giants there. And we were in your sight as grasshoppers. You've got to be kidding me. As children of God, we're grasshoppers? Absolutely not. We're conquerors in Christ. So they disregarded the Lord. Is there anything in here about the Lord? Everything these people said was out of the Lord. Isn't it sad today that people try to solve things without the Lord? Can you imagine trying to, to run anything and never have prayer? What would we do without prayer? We had a great prayer answer this past week in our home. Not only do we now have a married grandson, but my wife made the wedding cake. 
That's not as easy as you may think. And what was interesting, uh, it was two tiers, so it was bigger than that. Plus, it was 70 miles to where we're going to celebrate the cake. So we took a picture of the cake in Vermont. <laughs> just in case. It's like, in Vermont, it looked like this. I'm sorry, Ben Burke, it looked like this. I never knew that 522 had so many bumps in the road. Every bump in the road, they go, here goes that cake. <laughs> but it was interesting. Well, we're, while she was working, getting ready to work on that cake, we were reading through the Old Testament, right where it was saying, when Moses built a tabernacle in the wilderness, God gave skillful men to do this and this, and there's chapter after chapter after chapter, and we're just saying, Lord, if you give these guys the ability to make the tabernacle, please give my wife the ability to make this wedding cake. <laughs> and she got so many compliments yesterday about it. But again, that was an answer to prayer. Uh, turning to the Lord. So they, they did not pay attention to the Lord. Now I want to go back to 13, verses 1 and 2, to get this whole thing started. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may go and search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of your fathers, you shall send a man, every one a ruler among them. God said, I'm giving you this land. So when they went, they always said, man, this is great. Now, I don't have a great old, uh, a rich uncle. I don't know if any of you have a rich uncle. But how about if your rich uncle called you just before Christmas and said, I have a Christmas gift for you. Go down to Crown Smokers in Tawny Town and buy any vehicle they've got for sale. You're going to go down and get the biggest jalopy they have, huh? You're going to get the nicest car. You're like, well, I wonder, is he going to be able to pay for it? If your rich uncle pays for it, it's yours. <laughs> and they should have said, this is a fabulous land. God is good. But they did not, they disregarded God's promises. God's the one who said this. I'm not strong, but God is. Second, they, uh, about this, God's protection and provision in the past. Think where they are. They want to go back to Egypt. But how did they get here? Oh, uh, I think we call it the ten plagues. Well, who did that? Did Moses do that? Moses didn't even want to go. God said, all right, take Aaron and say this. Take your rod and do this. And all those plagues in Egypt, who did that? God says, Pharaoh doesn't know me. We're going to get, we're going to get acquainted. He's going to know me. And then the plagues came. And then later on, oh, we're going to make a distinction. The plagues were on the Egyptians' cattle, not the Jewish cattle. They're going to have midnight all day long in Egypt and daylight in Israel. And then the Passover. The death of Pharaoh's son, who is a gift of the gods. God didn't keep him alive. And so we have all that. Getting through the Red Sea. How are you going to get through the Red Sea? You call in the Army Corps of Engineers. Well, probably not. Once on school class, the teacher said, you're crossing the Red Sea. It wasn't that deep. The little kid said, that's a, that's a bigger miracle than I thought. How's that? All Pharaoh's armies drowned in a little ditch. <laughs> so God did all this. Then they want water. Where are you going to get water? We got firm on waterworks. Let him all reach over there. So God gives them one out of rock. We need something to eat. God gives them manna. All this to happen at this point for all these years. And so they didn't say about God's protection. Plus, how did they know they were supposed to be here? How were they land? God's Shekinah glory over the tabernacle. When the glory was on the tabernacle, you stay. When the glory rises, you follow it. So God led them all the way. Question. They want to go back to Egypt. You think God's Shekinah glory is going to lead with them back to Egypt? I don't think it's going to go that way. So they are going back. You're on your own. You want to go on, you're God's. You go back, you're on your own. 
So they desired the past. They forgot how terrible it was. Numbers 11, it says, we remember in Egypt, fish, cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, garlic, and now we just have manna. Now, I don't know exactly what manna tastes like. But my taste buds right now are not real strong about going back to leeks, onions, and garlic. Maybe it's all right, a little flavoring on it, but for a diet? And so they forgot how bad it really was in the past. And they said in Numbers 14, would God we died in Egypt? Well, when they were in Egypt, what were they doing? God says, I've seen the affliction. We've forgotten how bad it was in the past. I know. When we talk about the good old days, well, I lived the good old days. Those of us that were born in the 30s remember World War II. The outcome was not always that known. Before Normandy Beach, there wasn't a guaranteed victory. When Jackie's dad was drafted into the military with a wife and two kids, the first day in boot camp, the commander said, pay attention. People are getting killed and you're their replacement. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> now he survived. He went through it. But well, we didn't know all those things. <laughs> Korea. I had a first cousin. Pilot. 50 bombing missions over North Korea. Never hit. But I'm telling you, talk about doing some praying for Jesse. And we were counting how we knew how many... We knew the countdown to get through that. We lived through that. Vietnam. My wife and I lived through the Martin Luther King riots in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Close enough, I could take my camera and I could see the houses in the village being on fire. So, mm -hmm. good old days. Mm -hmm. Good old days when we went to church at 34 Chevrolet. Forget about automatic transmission, stick shift. Forget about air conditioning. It didn't even have a heater. <laughs> we had plenty of blankets, but that's not the same. So, some of these good old days, then medically, my father had carcinoma in the stomach. Four months later, he's dead. I get a pop a car, and a colon resection, in 25 years, here I am. So, we go back and think how great it was. Now, I know it was safe. Frederick High School probably had more guns than you'd ever would want to carry to a school today. The guys are going to go around hunting or squirrel hunting or deer hunting after, after school. I realize things were different then. But there were difficult times. We didn't know what was going to turn out. And so they, they elevated the past. I'm glad to live now. <coughs> Occasionally, things happen out there. I wish my dad could be here. But then God gave us two children seven children, and eight great-grandchildren. And just on Christmas Day, that youngest one, just a few weeks old, and holding him in my arms, I wouldn't trade a moment of that for anything but that coming back. So thank the Lord for those good days, but we have the promises of God. They desired the past. So their decision was fatal. Numbers 13, 31, we be not able to go. And then the verse that we use for our scripture today, 14, four, uh, verse 4, let us make a captain, let us return to Egypt. Mm -hmm. How are they going to get back there? Their decision was failure. We can't do it. We're not depending on the Lord. Their destiny was <clears throat> fatal. <clears throat> During this time, God said to Moses, my spirit will go with you. And Moses said, if your spirit doesn't go, I'm not going. I like to do things, but I want to make sure I'm in the center of God's will. Uh, my tendency is not to lag behind. Mine is to kind of jump the gun, but I won't use more than this one track illustration. I found when I was on the track team in high school, you can't jump the gun. If you do it two times, you're off the team. So, God has his ways of, of doing things, and uh, they, they made a wrong decision. Decisions determine destiny. You can't go to the right place while making the wrong decisions. 
And don't we see that in people? We, we see them growing up and they're making wrong decisions and eventually it catches up with them if you make a wrong decision. If you turn a wrong way on the highway, you're not going to get the right destination. Numbers 14, 37. After this, here we have Joshua and Caleb, when I get to them in just a minute. It's the only way to do it. These guys said, don't, we're going back to Egypt. Numbers 14, 37. It talks about, from verse 36, And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation murmur against him, by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. We probably have all know people that, from our estimation, they died too soon. Maybe there were patterns in life. Have you ever seen people that they were doing things you know, that's going to shorten your days? They do things that we had a kid in Thermont during that big blizzard, I think it was 2010, uh, when it was really closed in Thermont. They had a little club in Thermont that were in, ingesting morphine. And uh, they did so much that the body began to bleed out over. And one of the kids died. They had to take them to the morgue in Baltimore. The, the snow was so deep his mother couldn't even go to Baltimore to get his body. When he came to Thermont, asked me to do the funeral. And so the, the young people was kind of like an eye opener. The snow was so deep in the cemetery, we parked our hearse at the street and had to carry the, set, the hearse in. Why? These kids were on drugs. What was it doing? It's killing them. Today, you see kids on drugs, it's going to kill you. Wrong decisions. Playing with things. Um, playing with fire can get you in trouble. So their decision was fatal. Now, stand back. You're watching. You have 10 guys say, we can't do it. Two men say, we can do it. And the next morning, these 10 men are dead. You think they might say, mm, I think. These guys didn't obey the Lord. I think they disobeyed what God wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Even Aaron's sons went in, disobeyed the Lord. What like the older Jeremiah? Remember Jeremiah said the captivity is going to be 70 years. Get ready, it's a long time. Well, come a guy and say, I am. Jeremiah, you're just a pessimist. It's going to be two years. He says, 70. Ah, you say too. All right. You're not going to survive at all. A couple months later, falls over dead. You think it might get people's attention. Now, it doesn't mean living on earth alone means you're right. But when you disobey the Lord, sometimes the consequences are pretty fatal. Do things the wrong way. How many times on farming, growing on farms, guys didn't follow the direction? Like, shut the machine down when it's jammed. My dear friend didn't do that. He unclocked the machine with his arm going in it. So we make mistakes and we pay a penalty. Listen to what God has to say. We're not going to go back. Now we have two men that are going on. Caleb and Joshua. Numbers 13. 30, and all of this that we, we have, uh, 1330, Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go at once and possess it. We're one well able to overcome it. Caleb says, We can do it. Since I give a meaning and names, like, I gotta give the meanings of what's here. I didn't know this is the word Caleb in Hebrew means dog. D-O-G. Now to me, Dog is always a beneficial word. I think with dog, to hang would be companion. Someone with you. To me, it was a cattle dog. We always had a dog on the farm. But it was more than a pet. It was a pet that could round up the cattle. And as God would have it, the best 
cattle and dog we had is when Dad's health was declining. He'd open the, the, board, the door out to the field and say, sing up your sport, and the cows would start coming because they knew what was coming. <laughs> and brought them in. So it means that I was, I'd say it means watchdog. I guess that the elders but nobody's going to sneak up on the elders. A dog is a good thing. So maybe Caleb is a watchdog for Israel. He sees what's going on. He says, we can do it. We can possess it. Numbers 14, 38. I read 37. That said, all these men died. It said, but Joshua <coughs> and Caleb that went up to search the land lived still. The two that said we can't do it are still here. The ten over there are bad, and they all passed away. But then in Joshua 14, 7, uh, this guy, Caleb, he went to Joshua and said, I have to get some more land. And he said some interesting, that's what he said. 40, I was 40 years old, when we went to search the land. And then verse 10, the Lord has kept me alive these 45 years. So it's 45, 40 years old when he starts, and that was 45 years ago. Which means, how old is he? 85. Can you imagine anybody being 85 and still going on? If you ever see a preacher like that, I can talk to him. <laughs> but one other thing I can't say that is true about me and Joshua, uh, Caleb. Verse 11, I don't believe this. I, I do believe it. I was strong this day as the day Moses sent me to search the land then. As my strength was now, so it is now. So I can say, I can match Caleb's age, but uh, my wife will verify I don't have the strength I had 45 years ago. Not even mowing the lawn. I can still do it, but I'm not going to do that. But I want you to see, here's a man back then, that crisis. See, a lot of us are here. There are crises in our lives. We didn't just get here. We made decisions, and God has blessed us and kept his word. God said, I'll lead you to the land, and Caleb was one of the ones that went into that land, and God blessed him in my ways. Joshua, the other guy, his first name was Oshawa which means salvation. And I looked high and low. Verse 16 says, Moses called him Joshua, Joshua. So Moses changed his name. I've looked, every book I've looked, we don't know why. But I'm wondering if it could be that Moses saw that this guy Joshua is going to follow him. And Jehovah is salvation. How did Joshua Across the uh, Jordan River, Jehovah brings salvation. And I look at a lot of people, and they compare themselves to me. They want to be as good as me to get to heaven. And I'm going to do it, right? You got people, they want to live as good as you so they can get to heaven. It's not our goodness. Jehovah is salvation. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. So Joshua shows us that our getting to heaven is not me, not my works. It is God's works. And I didn't read this before, but I want to read it now in, uh, uh, let's see, Numbers 14, beginning in verse 6. Joshua son of Don and Caleb the son of Jephunneh read their cousins and said, and this is what they said, the land which we pass through to search is an exceedingly great land. But look at this. This is what Moses said. If the Lord delight in us, do you see anything in the ten spies about God? These ten guys are on their own. Joshua says, if the Lord delight in us, when we say the Lord delights in Fisburg Bible Church, the Lord delights in the Fellowship Bible Churches, do we say the Lord delights in those who obey his word? Free Christian school. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it. Here we go. The land that flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Do you ever count?
counsel people and say, you shouldn't be doing this. This is going to get you in trouble. You're counseling young people. You can't keep doing that. It's going to get you in difficulty. Neither fear you the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Can you hear these guys say, we can't do a thing. The other guy said, we're going to eat them alive. These people are bread to us. For their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. When you in the promised land, we get a little hint from Rahab. What was Rahab's opinion? We're scared to death of these Jews coming over here. Isn't it interesting today? The world is scared. We have a great God. And so God gave Joshua this great land. Then in verse uh, 27, 18, take Joshua later on. God said, take Joshua, whom my spirit is in him, lay your hand on him and give him the charge. And Joshua was the one that was replacing Moses while the others were dead a long time ago. Closing thought about this Joshua. At the end of his life, what's he say? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods or fathers served on the other side of the flood, now I haven't looked that up. He said, you want to go back and live before Abraham? You want to go back and live like it was before? You want to give up everything you had? Can you imagine a 100-yard dash, and you're winning at the 95-yard, and you want to turn it back to the starting line? No way! We're going on. He says, the gods of the Amorites, in whose land we now dwell. We're in the land they said we couldn't get. To a God that says it doesn't exist. Just ask Pharaoh. But then he said this in closing. Choose you whom you will serve. But as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. Now I believe my son and his daughter, my daughter will have this sign somewhere in their house. And her son yesterday was married to a girl whose first comment to Steve was, if you come between me and the Lord, we're done. That's the first date. <laughs> That's the kind of the girl you want to date. He said, I'm not coming between you and the Lord. And so it was great to have a godly wedding yesterday with God being honored. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I think that's our prayer also. Let's pray for others that they would choose to go on with the Lord, not to go back to the things of the world. Let's bow down in prayer. Father, we thank you especially for Joshua and Caleb. What great men of faith, even in a time when others turned away from you. We thank you for this church, those that are going with you, going on with you in your presence. And we have a sort of great God. We pray you work in our lives. That was to glorify you, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
know you and come to you and to have salvation and to realize that we are sinners and cannot save ourselves. Would you offer that plan whole and free? But every day, you allow us graciously to come to our own recognition of how we need you and how desirable it is to do things your way. And we pray, Lord, that we would be early in our coming to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.